church to hunger for your ways. Let the fragrance of our prayers arise. Lead me on the road of sacrifice that in unity the Thank you, Vicki. I'd like to invite you now to turn in our bulletin to the prayer of confession printed there, where I'd like to invite us all to join in praying it together. Please pray with me. Lord, forgive us for accepting cheap grace, for receiving without giving, for praying without listening, for believing without committing. Make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hate, let us sow love. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Whatever our circumstance, let your power be made perfect in our weakness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our words of forgiveness this morning, I'd like to read this verse from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. That just seems like a particularly poignant promise to us this week. So that's why we have a prayer of confession. Actually, we do every week, because every week we need God's grace, and every week we hear again the promise that if we, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Believe that good news, dear friends. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and made new. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us stand and share Christ's peace with each other. Well, on this Memorial Day weekend, um, we have a lot to pray about and for. Certainly, we're praying for, the, uh, for our country, uh, for the, the, the people in Buffalo, New York, and other places, and of course, particularly in Uvalde, Texas. We're also praying for um, all those, I, I like the way, if I may borrow Dick Bish, the way Dick Bish puts it, for all those who put themselves in harm's way, uh, uh, military people, uh, police, police, firefighters, um, all those who put themselves in harm's way, um, 
to protect us and all those, uh, of course, on Memorial Law, uh, Day who have given their lives uh, for that. What other prayers can we remember today, specific prayers you might have? Any, okay, if you pass that down to Bill. Uh, thank you. I'd like prayers for my Uncle Ken. Uh, he's 99 years old, and has had, he's had a tough life, but he's persevered through it. And right now he's in the hospital with COVID, and, and he's got other problems, including heart problems and also pneumonia. It does not sound like a good combination, but prayers for him and his family. For Kim, is it? Ken. Ken. Oh, I should. Okay. <laughs> prayers for another Ken with... 99 years old with COVID. And Roger, pass that down to Roger. Prayers of joy and celebration. Our joy is that our daughter, Kathy, is here from Southern California. We haven't seen her for three years. Oh. COVID, so. Yay, <laughs> Kathy, We're welcome. We're enjoying that a lot. And uh, celebration, Nancy's having her birthday on Monday. And uh, I don't have the clearance, the security clearance to tell you what the number is. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, prayers to have Kathy with us. Sorry about the weather, Kathy, but, but and uh, Nancy's birthday. Okay, back here, Carolyn. Well, it was a joy yesterday at, at uh, Jeanette Swector's uh, memorial for those that attended. I think you, you've heard so much more about her, but... Uh, um, I have a joy that this past week our uh, library was called and we got 1,200 books. So th there's a family that I'd, I'd like us to pray for. Uh, Rhonda Robbins and her husband, they have two, uh, three small children, girls, and they are taking in two relatives, the little boys that are five and six. And... Uh, she was having to clear out her grandmother. Her grandmother lives in the house, too. And she was having to clear out these 1,200 books. She counted them. Wow. Because they were going to need the room. But uh, it was a Christian bookstore that uh, was closed that we re reaped the, all these books from. But I need prayers that we find charities for a lot of them because a lot of them are they're Christian fiction, but they're like women's books, you know, wedding this and... Oh. You know, a lot of, but they're really good authors, but I, I can't use them all for score. So if you know a charity, especially for women, uh, let me know and, and we'll pass them on because it was such a blessing. So okay. uh, Mary Alice is the grandmother and she's getting over being sick from the, the little kids passing on their germs to her with a cold. So, so a, a, a prayer of thanks for the donation from Mary Alice to the church library. 1,200 volumes, and prayers for you guys as you uh, catalog and dispense and, and make use of those. Colleen. I'd also like to include teachers uh, for those people that are in harm's way. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, a sign of the times. It's, we need, we need lots of prayers. Indeed. Uh, prayers for teachers who uh, sadly are also in harm's way. Are there other prayers we can include? Yes, uh, okay, Brenda, and then pass it on down to Brad. Could we have prayers for the two case, COVID cases at El Dorado and pray that they get over it and also that it doesn't spread? Okay, so two cases of COVID at El Dorado where uh, Brenda lives, that they get over it and it doesn't spread. Brad? Prayers for our son, uh, Brian, his uh, mother-in-law uh, ended up in um, Harborview. We're not sure exactly why, but prayers for her uh, quick recovery. And <laughs> for your uh, son, yeah, Brenda. As Ken said, can you hear me? As Ken said, the uh, flowers are from my son's wedding. Um, they picked the one nice day in May for an outdoor wedding, so it was really a beautiful, perfect day. And they're now um, honeymooning in the Bahamas. <laughs> so prayers for as they start their, their life, their married life together. 
for Joel and his new wife, Joel and Melissa. Any others? Let's bring all our prayers to God today. Please, please pray with me. Lord, every week we pray the Lord's Prayer. And we pray it again and again because that prayer is still not fulfilled. We pray, hallowed be thy name, because so many things in our world and even in the church bring dishonor to your name and cause people to reject you. We pray, give us this day our daily bread, not only because the food we have comes from you, but because so many people in the world have none. We pray, deliver us from evil, because there is still violence in Ukraine, Uvalde, Texas, Buffalo, New York, and so many other places where children die. We pray thy kingdom come because we yearn for justice and peace and we look forward to the day when death and suffering will be no more and you will wipe every tear from our eyes. Until that happens, Lord, we will keep praying this and all our other prayers for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, all that we have comes from you. Let these gifts that we return to you be signs of your refuge and grace to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first scripture this morning is from Luke chapter 10, verses 21 through 25. At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was the, your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then, turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So as you notice, we're still reading from the Gospel of Luke this Sunday, but actually we're reading passages from the Gospel of Luke that introduce our next sermon series theme for the summer, which is the Lord's Prayer. 
So for our second scripture, I'd like to read Luke's account of the Lord's Prayer from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. Please join me in prayer. Lord, teach us not only how to pray, but how to listen, that we may hear your word and be shaped into the people you want us to be through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we will be studying the Lord's Prayer in our church services this summer. After, after, uh, after the next two weeks, next Sunday is, pa- is Pentecost Sunday, when Aaron McArdle will be leading us in learning about the coming of the Holy Spirit at, at Pentecost. And then the next Sunday is Trinity Sunday, when Aaron Grayson will be leading us on a, on a, a message about the Trinity. But then we're going to dive more deeply, phrase by phrase, into the Lord's Prayer. But before we start that next month, I want to talk this morning about why Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer in the first place. Why did Jesus feel we needed a certain prayer to learn how to say? According to Luke, it was in response to his disciples. In in the scripture I just read read from Luke 11, uh, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John, meaning John the Baptist, taught his disciples. Now, you need to understand, the disciples know how to pray. I mean, they're, they're, they're Jewish. They've grown up Jewish. They've grown up with the Psalms of the Old Testament. They know how to pray. What they're asking from Jesus is to teach them a special prayer that will be our prayer prayer that will identify us as a group. The the rabbis, at least some of them in ancient Israel, taught their their, uh, followers a a certain prayer that would uh, distinguish them from from the the students of other rabbis. Um, Apparently, even John the Baptist did that. It's sort of like a fight song. You know how high schools and colleges have fight songs. Uh, actually, Whitworth didn't, but, uh, <laughs> but other, other, big, other schools do have fight songs that, that uh, are meant to help their, their students uh, 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 co- uh, coalesce and identify as, as a group. And the, the rabbis did this. So the disciples want Jesus to do the same thing for them. Now, I think one way to understand a religion is to look at some of its prayers. So I want to, uh, on the screen, put on this morning two prayers from other religions. The first one here is from the writings of Buddhism. I quoted this from one of the writings of Buddhism. It goes like this. And having seen the truth, having mastered the truth, having understood the truth, having penetrated the truth, having overcome uncertainty, having dispelled all doubts, having gained full knowledge, depended on nobody else for knowledge of the doctrine of the teacher, they said to the Blessed One, Glorious Lord, glorious Lord, just as if one should set up, Lord, what has been overturned, or should reveal what has been hidden, or should point out the way to one who has lost his way, or should bring a lamp into the darkness in order that those who had eyes might see visible things. Thus has the Blessed One preached the doctrine in many ways. A long, complicated sentence, but I think you you get the uh, uh, impression of what Buddhism is about in this prayer. Buddhism is about enlightenment. 
You know, all the uh, discovering, knowing the truth, um, uh, revealing what's hidden, pointing the way to one who's lost, shining a lamp in the darkness. Bo the very word Buddha means awakened or enlightened. In Buddhism, God is, is like the, the divine truth with a capital T, the divine uh, reality that permeates all of the world. And Buddhism is about discovering that divine essence, that divine principle that, that suffuses the world and learning how to fit in with it, how to accommodate ourselves to it. In Buddhism, the task of a disciple is enlightenment. The second prayer I want to share is from the opening chapter of the Quran, the scriptures of Islam. It says, in the name of God, the beneficent, the merciful. Praise belongs to God, the Lord of all beings, the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship. You alone we ask for help. Guide us on the straight path, the path of those to whom you have been gracious, not of those with whom you are incensed, nor those who are straying. Now, in this prayer, God is portrayed not so much as a divine principle that permeates reality, per permeates the universe, but as a divine master whom we are called to obey. Islam is not as much about enlightenment as it is about obedience. Now, as, as Christians, we, we certainly believe that God should be obeyed. I mean, God is, for us also, God is the master, the Lord of all creation, whom we are called to obey. And we also believe that God, as creator, has built into our world principles, principles, uh, 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 aspects of reality that we should understand and, uh, and accommodate ourselves to. Gravity is a principle of the universe, and we would do well to reckon with it. And in, in the same way, so are things like justice and forgiveness and suffering and death. Not surprisingly, there are parallels between the Christian faith and Islam and Buddhism. We, we should not be surprised by that. We should actually expect that. Because if we believe in one God who created the entire world, then it's only reasonable to expect that the, the fingerprints of God are all over the place, including on the religions of, of other peoples. Nevertheless, in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus gives us a new way of thinking about God and relating to God, which in turn gives us, and this is the key, gives us a new identity. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to address God, not as truth with a capital T, which means we are people seeking it, nor to address God as master with a capital M, meaning we are people who obey, because the truth is we don't always. Rather, he teaches us to call God Father, not because God is male. We'll get into that more next month, but he teaches us to call God Father because God is personal and caring and to tell us who we are. We are not people of enlightenment. We are not people who, have, who, are who are trying to have everything figured out. We are not people of, we are not models of obedience, living exemplary lives. We are, according to the Lord's Prayer, children. See, that's what it means to teach us to call God Father. To call God Father means we see ourselves as children. Not the enlightened, not the perfect, not the models for things, but as children dependent on God's grace. Jesus makes that point in our first scripture that Jan read for us from, from uh, chapter 10, the chapter of four. In, in that scripture, we have one of Jesus. There are only a couple places in the Bible where we have Jesus' own prayers word for word. 
And this is one of them, Luke chapter 10. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and re have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. So Jesus himself calls God Father, of course, in a special way because of being God's son, but in the process reveals who we are. You have revealed these things not to the wise and intelligent, not to the enlightened, not to the perfect, but to infants. I mean, we're not in this prayer, we're not even children, we're babies. Babies, totally dependent on God's grace for our lives. This in turn leads to our mission. And uh, I wanna read a, uh, well, first of all, let me, let me talk about, actually, let me talk about how, about agendas. When we pray to God, we almost always come to God with an agenda, don't we? At least frequently. I still remember one night listening to my three-year-old daughter say her bedtime prayers. Um, this, this is now going on 40 years ago, but it's, this one's etched in my memory. We were sitting on the, I was sitting on the edge of her bed. She was, she was getting ready for bed. And uh, so we're saying her bedtime prayers and she bowed her head, closed her eyes um, and prayed, dear God, please help make cookies, amen. <laughs> she had an agenda and she was making it clear. So do we. When, when we pray, we want something. I mean, we have an agenda. We want healing. We want jobs. We want uh, justice. We want peace. We want no more shootings in schools or in grocery stores. We want safety for our families and our community. And these are not bad things to pray for, not at all. But we have to remember God's agenda is always bigger than our agenda. And that's why Jesus teaches us the Lord's Prayer, because the Lord's Prayer gives us God's agenda. We cannot pray, hallowed be thy name, without involving ourselves in making God's name holy, without involving ourselves in worshiping and honoring God's name, and helping other people to experience God as good. Now, I'm going to talk more about this next month, but when we pray, hallowed be thy name, we're not just asking God to make his name holy. We're asking that God will help us to make God's name holy. And we are praying that other people will come to regard names, God's name as holy, which means we want to help other people experience God as good. And that's how the Lord's Prayer gives us a mission. In the same way, when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we, we cannot pray that without involving ourselves in feeding the hungry, without involving ourselves in the needs of the poor and the well-being and safety of our children. And we cannot pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, without asking ourselves, to whom do we need to be reconciled? What hurt feelings or broken relationships should we take the next step to heal? The very act of praying the Lord's Prayer gives us an agenda for our lives. Near the beginning of the, of the Presbyterian Book of Order is a paragraph called The Great Ends of the Church. Um, I, I don't often read from the Book of Order in our church services, but I want to read this paragraph. It goes like this. The great ends of the church are the proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humankind, the shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship of the children of God, the maintenance of divine worship, the preservation of the truth, the promotion of social righteousness, and the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven to the world. Now, I was struck by how that mission statement, which is sort of the mission statement for the entire worldwide Presbyterian church, how that mission statement connects to the Lord's Prayer. For example, the maintenance of divine worship, hallowed be thy name. 
the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven to the world. Thy kingdom come. The shelter, nurture, and fellowship of the children of God. Give us this day our daily bread. The preservation of the truth and the promotion of social righteousness. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord's Prayer gives us an agenda for our church, which is God's agenda. In the musical Fiddler on the Roof, the milkman Tevia uh, talks about the traditions that uh, are inform his Jewish community of Anatevia. It's the opening song of the musical, Traditions, and he goes on to tell us some of the traditions of the Jewish community of Anatevka. He doesn't understand them. If you ask him, why do you have these traditions? He goes, I don't know, but it's a tradition. And then in one of the great lines of the movie, he says, because of our traditions, every one of us knows who we are and what God expects of us. That's why Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer so that we would know who we are and what God expects of us. Amen. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.